is your husky begging you all the time? Is it for food? Is it for a toy? Is it to go out? Well, begging can be incredibly frustrating. So let's see if we can help with that. Welcome back to the Fenrir Siberian Husky Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Siberian Husky and then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. If your Siberian Husky is begging all the time, that can be just really, really annoying and also just damage your relationship with your Husky. So today we're going to be tuning into a webinar that the canine behaviorist and founder of FenrirCanineLeaders.com, Will, has recorded all about dogs that won't stop begging and how to deal with that situation. So over to you, Will. So in today's quickfire webinar, we're going to talk about one of the most common, but definitely lower on the spectrum in terms of severity of behavioral problems, and that's with dogs begging. Now, for me, we're going to go over this one quite quickly because there really doesn't need too much time or intricate finesse in terms of an advanced canine behavior modification program. Whether you are struggling with begging with your dog at home or you're thinking about getting into a, a professional capacity of working with dogs, begging really is quite a simple one. Now, again, I always talk about fixing things at the root cause of a problem rather than focusing on the symptom of a root cause. And begging is definitely one of those scenarios scenarios where begging is absolutely a learnt behavior and it is alert if it has become a learnt behavior it means that the owners weren't overly aware of it becoming a learnt behavior or what they were doing in order to cause that learnt behavior from happening and just how a dog can learn to beg for food and it become an obnoxious annoying behavior they can also learn to not beg for food so what I like to do is always strip it back and make the owner understand where begging comes from and how it's actually their fault, not the dog's fault. Now again, begging is one of those behaviours that a dog will test. Every single dog will, usually in puppyhood. The problem is when they're begging and they're incredibly cute, it is very easy for us to then give them praise, attention, food, anything that it is that they want. That dog then very simply learns this behaviour of me begging gets me the desired response therefore i am going to beg more and more and more it's a very basic principle of operant conditioning um, we have accidentally positively reinforced the behavior of begging when we positively reinforce a behavior that behavior will be seen more frequently it's very simple now it gives us two options when it comes to breaking down that behavior and stop it from happening we can kind of go the slower approach of simply redoing that and positively reinforce the desired behavior and simply ignoring begging and the dog over time will start to learn when I beg I used to get the desired response and now I don't however if I'm calm quiet well mannered I get the desired response over time begging will start to happen less frequently because we're completely ignoring it and calm desirable behaviors of being quiet and well mannered will start to increase now, again, it's really important that the owners understand those basic uh, theories of operant conditioning and how we teach our dogs behaviours, whether it's teaching them how to sit, stay, down, heel, what people normally think of when you talk about teaching or training a dog, but how it is that we accidentally teach them behaviours like manners, which is where begging comes into. That is a huge part and the fundamental principles of both our Perfect Puppy course for new puppy owners, as well as our boot camp principle for people that are struggling with problems so when I've helped people with begging before sometimes people want a really quick fix and there is things that we can do that I'll talk about in a minute to kind of uh, help overcome begging quickly but that is definitely a plaster on the the symptom what we always like to do is teach owners how to become high level canine leaders and this is one of those behaviors that is fascinating when I say okay you want to stop your dog begging we're going to do nothing about begging I want you guys to go through one of our boot camp processes and if it's in person I help them do it or maybe they do a, one of our online versions of our boot camp they go through that principle and then we've had hundreds of people now into the thousands of people be like I cannot believe that it just went away I was like, yeah, it did go away because that principle has taught you how to become a high-level canine leader. You now understand where you are accidentally teaching bad behaviors like begging and then what you need to do and how you need to interact and communicate and work and live with your dog to make sure that you are promoting the desirable behaviors and then 
getting the undesirable behaviours to either correct them or let them just disappear on their own Why we're promoting the desirable ones. Like I say, it kind of strips it back to that root cause level, fix it at the root cause, and then these symptoms just naturally just fall off. And it's a beautiful thing to be a part of, and it's a beautiful thing to help owners be able to do with their dogs. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femrick canine leaders where you can see more about our industry leading products that we create if you're interested in following me personally that's at i am will atherton where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behavior cases in the world and what it takes to run these kind of youtube channels and maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me that's the place for you so there'll be links down in the description box for both of our instagram pages i'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there now, like I say, that's fixing it at the root cause, is just simply restructuring your relationship, teaching yourself on how to be a high level canine leader, getting a basic understanding of operant conditioning, and all those things will just start to come naturally. It takes a few weeks to a month, that's why our boot camp process is a month. Um, and if you are interested in that, by the way, there'll be a link down in the description box below, but it's just about restructuring that relationship and about you understanding where you're going wrong and what you should be doing differently and uh, what you should be doing to promote good behaviors and discourage bad ones. Now, if you want to fix begging much more quickly, we can take a more corrective approach. Um, again, it's definitely one of those things. It's, it's a tool in our toolbox. We can use it, but I, I'd like to really encourage people to fix the root cause problem first, because then that means that we can do all of these things from a place of leadership and a balanced approach, but it's a balanced approach through being firm and fair and not having to resort to quick fix corrective methods for a behavior like begging is, is extreme. When I talk about especially physical corrections, I have my three uh, principles of what justifies a physical correction. Is that dog causing harm to another dog, other animal or a human? A physical harm that is then if the answer is yes then for me it justifies the use of physical corrections is that dog causing severe harm to itself uh, again that justifies physical correction if the answer is yes is that dog destroying uh, personal physical property if the answer again is yes then it justifies the use of physical correction that's just how i work begging doesn't really answer yes to any of those questions so I don't necessarily like to um, justify especially a physical corrective measure now what we can do is use verbal corrections again verbal corrections only really work efficiently when you are a good calm consistent leader you've built a good relationship with your dog that sees you as its calm consistent leader and looks up to you for guidance and direction which then means your communication pathways are wide open and when your communication pathways are wide open you can verbally communicate what you do want but also what you don't want so if you do want to take a more verbally corrective approach to fixing begging well we still need to go back and address a leadership relationship and communication in that order but if we do have those things established we can do a very firm verbal correction when begging happens we can use my correct redirect reinforce approach so the begging behavior happens instantly we come in with a ah, no whatever marker we want to use, whatever our verbal correction is, to snap them out of it, make it very clear that that is not something that I want to happen. As soon as we've corrected them, we then redirect them to the desirable behavior, which usually in terms of begging is to either go to your place, uh, so we can use a place or a bed command, or it's to sit and wait quietly. So we can use, say for the sit, for example, we verbal correction, ah, ah, sit, stay. And then to start with, we might ask for a quiet stay for three or four seconds, and then we can reinforce and praise that behavior. Over time, we can extend that to asking them to sit, stay for 15 minutes in a place while we eat our dinner. Then after we've eaten our dinner, we can go, good boy, good stay, break. And then that's all the reinforcement they need. They don't have to have food. They don't have to have table scraps. They don't have to have access to the furniture, whatever it is that they're begging for. But what we can do is we can redirect them to the desirable behavior. When they're displaying that desirable behavior, we can reinforce and um, actively promote that behavior. They'll then start to want to do that behavior more. And again, the begging behavior will come down. If you want to add a verbal correction in at the start of that process, you can. Bear in mind, verbal corrections work better when you have good leadership skills, which has a good relationship with your dog, which means you have good communication. Uh, if you don't have those things in place, we still need to go back. And again, that's what our boot camp's for. So I hope you found that quick fire webinar useful and informative and you were able to get something from that. Uh, and I can't wait to see you on a future video or training session. 
there you have it guys, some really useful tips and tricks that you can start putting into practice with your Siberian Husky straight away. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, get involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have two dedicated videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Fenrir Siberian Husky Show.